slavery? Was it because of industrialism? Because you want to move the country forward? And no. That slavery was. Not remember bad. Lincoln. I mean, have you seen the movie Lincoln? I did. Okay. Um, remember Lincoln when he was elected was not an abolitionist. Okay. Lincoln, matter of fact, won on a platform of protecting slavery where it existed. That was something that Sam Houston said at the time. Remember who was governor of Texas at the time? Sam Houston. And what did Sam Houston say to the Texans? He told them. He said, if you do this, if you do this, let me tell you what is going to happen. He had a lot of authority at that time. I mean, he had moral authority. He was the leader of San Jacinto. He said, you know, he said these northern people, they're not as hot-headed as you because they live in cooler climates. <laughs> but if you wake them up by doing this, you will ruin your country. Okay? And I fought too hard for it. They didn't listen. They deposed him as governor. The secession convention removed Sam Houston as governor, and sure enough, they went off on their merry way. What was at stake in the election of 1860 was not slavery itself, the existence of slavery, it was the expansion of slavery. Lincoln was a moderate who did not want slavery to go to places like California and the other Western territories. That's what was the issue. Anybody else? Oh, come on, somebody's bad. Come on, make me work for it. Come on. Anybody? So when the Texans say come and take it, what do they exactly mean by come and take it? Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> you all probably know that better than I do. You know, no, that's not something that scholars talk about much. That is, you know, that is like up there with the yellow rose of Texas. <laughs> you know, sort of the Texas tall tale. Much of Texas history is this conflation of tall tale. And the Texas tall tale, by the way, is studied by folklorists. It actually is a wonderful form of expression, an interesting one. Uh, one of the people, actually, who uh, used the Texas tall tale as a basis for his fantasy writing is a central Texan named Robert E. Howard. Robert E. Howard is the creator of Conan the Barbarian and Solomon Kane and a bunch of other uh, characters. Okay? He grew up and was raised in Cross Plains, Texas. Okay? So the Texas Tall Tale has strong uh, residents in Texas, but within Anglo Texas, not like Europe. Okay? When you examine the Texas Tall Tale from its racial dimensions, Again, there's, there's always been a counter or cross narrative that has always existed alongside those mainstream narratives. Okay? And now those are starting to become part of the mainstream literature. This is what John Hope Franklin means with this quote. You always have to look at history from different angles. It becomes more true that way, especially when you have an analysis of power. Okay? I mean, the most extreme example would be a gun. Right? Let's say I have a rifle. Right? Now, I have a rifle and I'm pointing at you. Now, I have a perspective on what that looks like, right? Let's <laughs> say so I have a scope. I have you in my crosshairs. What if I'm looking at you? Well, you're looking at me. You want the story, too, don't you? Now, you just have, I just happen to have a bullet in my chamber and you think you want But you do have a story, don't you? There you go. Okay? So you also, always, when you're looking at a historical narrative, or, I mean, I'm an archaeologist, so I also look at stuff on the ground, it's important to look at history not just from the standpoint of the people in power, you have to look at history from, uh, from the standpoint of the people from, on whom power is enacted. Okay? That's tremendously important. Otherwise, you're not going to really get a sense of the truth. This has been true since history was founded. You know, Thucydides, if you go back to ancient uh, Greece or ancient Rome. For instance, one of the most important things that happened in Western history was the assassination of Julius Caesar. Right? The Roman Republic. A lot of people you know, have conceptions of what that looked like. They all, you know, looked like Roman senators, they all were togas, you know, they all spoke like Lawrence Olivier, you know, this kind of thing. In truth, ancient Rome was not too unlike our society today. And it had many of the same problems. It really did. And the reasons behind the assassination of Julius Caesar are very timely. They're very important to understand for today's society. Okay. Wayne, no. Wayne oh, Carpenter, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Wayne Carpenter told me to uh, remember to tell you that uh, a couple of Sam Houston's speeches against secession were right here on the courthouse square in Belton. 
And it's written up in the book by John Kennedy from Boston College. That's right. That's right. John Kennedy talks about that. Now, Sammy, I can talk at length about Sam Houston. He's an interesting character, but I want to get to your question. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I was wondering. With the judgment, no question about it. Um, I mean, let's just talk about Reconstruction. In 1915, 100 years ago, the film A Birth of a Nation yes. was shown in the White House. And President Wilson said, this film is the greatest film ever because it's all so true. Now, what did this film depict? D.W. Griffith's film, still, that is the highest grossing film adjusted for inflation Else. I mean, this, this movie was monumental, okay? What was this film's depiction of the Ku Klux Klan? What was its depiction of race relations? It was a typical film of the time that showed white people in blackface eating fried chicken and watermelons, okay? It depicted the Negro legislators who had been elected to Reconstruction legislatures, including in Texas, as monkeys and buffoons who wanted to rape white women, and the Ku Klux Klan came in as saviors and saved these white women from rape. Okay? Now, a hundred years later, that is not the opinion that most historians have. But in 1915, what did President Wilson say? He said, well, not only did he say that, but what did he do? He resegregated the federal government of the United States. Okay? So African Americans who have enjoyed Republican Party patronage positions, such as collectors of customs or postmasters, they were let go. The all across the state 
that commemorate supposed Indian massacres of Anglo colonists when the historical record actually shows that the Texas Rangers literally attacked that Indian village and shot into tents where there were women and children sleeping. Okay? So there are many lies across the Texas landscape, just in empirical historical terms. It's not just a matter of historical perspective. Okay? So there does need to be a significant amount of correction of a lot of this. How long I can go on, for instance, I'll just mention this before I wrap up. Many markers in the state are neo-Confederate markers that were put by the sons of Confederate veterans or the United Daughters of the Confederacy that have the birth of a nation perspective on what, what reconstruction is. Okay? Those markers are wrong. One of them is even in the Texas Capitol. It's called the Children of the Confederacy Creed Mark. The Children of the Confederacy is the youth branch of the SCB, which says that, of course, the Civil War was not about slavery, it was about states' rights. Okay? So, no. I mean, I hope I'm not being too long-winded to answer your question. As Colin would say, we change it up all the time, and a different perspective now. I do. You can go on YouTube, and hopefully you'll be able to watch this lecture on YouTube, too. All right, let me wrap it up. Thank you so much.